Can I do? Stop it, David. How many more times? Are you uh, still all right for Saturday? Yeah, thanks. Right, so, thanks. Uh, it's all right. It gives me a chance to get to know him. Yeah, right. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Mike! Would you want me home, please? <laughs> I beg your pardon. No, honestly, someone's been following me. I'm dead scared. I'm sorry, Maureen, but, uh... Look, why, why don't you ask Ricky? I'm sure he'll be only too pleased. Records! <laughs> I'm not walking home when that's worth. What do you go giggling for? You might have said yes otherwise. Hey, into gorgeous, though. Yeah. <laughs> Come back here. Hey, come back here. Alfred. I don't really <laughs> What's that? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> what it down your jumper, Linda? No, oh, you <laughs> Mr. Blaketon. Two now until I'll be around first thing. Brilliant, thanks. Baby's doing fine, by the way. Great big boy. Nine pounds two ounces. I didn't disturb you or anything, did I? Not at all. Hang on a minute. What's wrong? Just keeping my distance after the other night. Neil, the other night... The other was... night was a mistake. And one I certainly won't make again. From now on, I'd prefer to keep things purely professional. Good night. Something. But I expect it was just a fox. See you in the morning. See you, See you boy. boy. What time do you call this? I came straight home. Club ends at quarter past nine. You've been smoking. I haven't! Don't lie to me, girl. I can smell it on you. That's other people. I never smoke. I hate Back it. Back late, stinking of cigarettes. If it was up to me, you wouldn't be going to that club in the first place. It's only ten o'clock, John. The girl of her age should be at home in the evenings with her parents. Dad! Yes. And if I catch you back late again, I shall take the strap to you. You're still child enough for that. I've done nothing wrong, Babs and Linda. Shush, Maureen. It's a school day tomorrow. Bed now, quick. Maureen. Night. Morning, out. It's 
party out. Where have you been? Eh? Well, I got in this morning, the door was unlocked, the lights were blazing and you disappeared. Alf. I've just arrived. I so who turned the lights on. Oh, no. It can't be. Shh. Well, he's not meant to be here till the end of the week. Or well, perhaps it's mine. Morning, lads. someone following me, walking home from the youth club. Yes? A man. At least, I think it was a man. Or a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> they were racing about in the middle of the night, shouting and screaming. And now this, in my post box. I tell you, when Gladys turns up, I'm off to the police house to lodge a complaint. You know, ever since Peter Wilson took over that youth club, things have gone from bad to worse. And a dozen stamps, please. A dozen stamps. There we are. Biscuits at uh, five shillings. Right. Hello, Claude. Why do you want green grass? Sit around in the window. Keep the home furs burning. Fires. It's time you learn to spell green grass. If I could spell, I'd be running the post office. Oh. Three bob a bag. Who's Bob? Oh, indeed jocular. I think we'll change that to shillings. Oh, I thought you might. Right, that'll be sixpence. Ugh. What's this? It's dinner. <laughs> Somebody put it in the post box. Yeah, they, are. they shouldn't have done that. It's not got a stamp on it. <laughs> right, Constable Bradley. So this is your little outpost, is it? Yes, Sarge. Very quaint. Oh, well, I like it. Good. Good. The only trouble with outposts is that they can so easily become a law unto themselves. Yes, Sarge. Last thing we want is a series of one-man bands. No, Sarge. Teamwork. That's the name of the game. So from now on, you'll report into Ashfordley daily at 8.30 sharp, along with Bellamy and Ventress. And hopefully the four of us can then start singing from the same song sheet. Yes, Sarge. I'm keen on singing, Bradley. And dancing. Do you dance? Two other little foibles. Punctuality and tidiness. Get the little things right, the big things will follow. So from now on, I want to see you in black socks and standard-issue boots. Sloppy uniform, sloppy mind. From now on, we're going to pull our socks up. Ah, Bradley! Would you mind taking a look at this and explain to me how it came to be in my post box, stuck to an income tax demand? Mr Blayton, this is... Uh... Sergeant Craddock. Sergeant Craddock, Mr. Blaketon. Good to meet you, Mr. Blaketon. Sergeant. Lulu, oh, mums and the papas. Monkeys, rolling stones, no, that's, that's what I call a band. And the animals. I could bring my Shirley Basses. 
Uh, no, I think we've got enough, thanks, Pete. Uh, right, now, that's it. I'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, uh, by the way, did you, uh, tell the girls what uh, Sergeant Craddock said? Yes, the, uh, the boys are going to walk them home. Though, knowing Maureen, she's probably making it up. Yeah. Very nice, girls. Well done. Um, Mike, my first dance, please. Uh-uh. Well, I'm going to be by my post, the record player. It would! No way! That would be bad. Right. You would have never... Ever. David. <laughs> you coming tomorrow night? Uh, uh no. No, uh, Peter says he's got enough helpers, so... Oh, did he? Right. Well, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> you were the ones that made me do it, not me! I know he going to do it, I knew he'd say no, and it was so embarrassing. <laughs> Get lost, lads! Well, Pete says we're to walk you home. Not likely! She's not allowed, boyfriend! Her dad don't know his own daughter, then. Well, we can walk her home, can't we, Bobs? Yeah, cos we've got private things to talk about. What things? Never you mind! Oh, well, don't blame us, then. You meet the Aiden's real strangler. Come on. I don't fancy any of them. David! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, Maureen. Constable Mike oh, yeah. Bradley. He's he can only probably do one. He's not that old. <laughs> I wonder what he kisses like. Maureen? She's got one track mind, she has. Oh, you can talk. I saw the stuff she wrote in a geography book. Shut up! What stuff? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Don't! I hate this bit! Yeah. What was that? What? Behind! What? Don't look round. Come on, let's run! Let's no! Go. No, it's just us scaring each other. I bet it's Ricky. Ricky! Ricky, if that's you, I'll kill you! <laughs> Tonight she said nothing. None of them. But now it seems somebody's been that following youth her for club. weeks. It ends far too okay, late. Okay, okay. Uh, look, um, just tell me again exactly what happened. Well, we were just in the dip there when we heard twig snapping and that. Someone was in the bushes watching us. But you didn't see him. Well, no. Just these eyes, like these two horrible eyes. Anything out there? <sighs> no. Well, there wouldn't be, would there? Not this long after. Right. Straight on to Aidan's field, Constable Ventress. Check those woods. Me, Sarge? Yes? But I'm doing the crime sheets. Important to get out and about? All of us, not just some. <coughs> Constable Bellamy can do the crime sheets. You, Bradley, back on your usual beat. Uh, what about the Maureen Dodds business? I'm just off now to talk to the girls. Oh, and Ventress, hmm. there's nothing more off put into the general public than a policeman with a fire ganging out of his mouth and ash shoulder on his uniform. All right. I'll be gone for the rest of the morning. After the girls, I shall be calling on a Mr. Claude Greengrass. Comes him already, then, eh? The Ashfieldly estate gave him Claude's name. Would you believe stolen fence posts? Oh, so we're talking uh, serious crime now, are we? <laughs> I've just seen Mr. Dodds in the waiting room. Fine. We've been having a bit of a chat about his daughter. Mm-hmm. Maureen. He and Mrs. Dodds are finding her a bit of a handful. He really does seem pretty worried. Thank you. I'll deal with it. Thank you, Mrs. Dodds. Now then, Maureen, your mum's out the room, so let's start telling the truth, shall we? I've told you the truth. So why was there all that giggling when you came to see me about it at the police station, eh? Dunno. A little bird tells me you've taken a tumble for Constable Bradley. No. Did you make up the story of the man in the woods to draw attention to yourself? No. To get Constable Bradley to come out and see you? I'll be talking to the two other girls, don't forget. And they'll say the same. Come on, Maureen. 
Nothing you say will go beyond these four walls. There was someone following me. There was, I promise you. Well, Mr Dodds, they should help. Indigestion can be caused by stress, you know. Is anything worrying you? No. Money worries? Family problems? Anything like that? No. Well, only Maureen, I suppose. Our daughter. How old is she? Fifteen. Mm-hmm. We seem to have no control over her whatsoever at the moment. It was so much easier when she was just a little lass. We knew where we were with her then. It's a difficult age. Give her another year, I'm sure she'll be fine. Greengrass? No. You're not Mr. Claude Greengrass? No. Not David. I see. David, eh? Well, well, well. And these are your logs, then, are they? No. No, well, they're Mr. Greengrass's logs. Oh, there he is, that's him. What's the trouble? Sergeant Craddock, Ashfordley Police. Uh, Good to meet you, Mr. Greengrass. Is the cattle on? Thank you. Do you know what I was thinking as I came up to see you, Mr Greengrass? No, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. I was thinking that you and I could be very, very useful to each other. Oh, uh, in what way? You know what's going on. I need information. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Put it this way. Last thing you want is me following you about quibbling at every little thing, right? And my word, if I wanted to be awkward. Vehicle licences. Dog licences, gun licences, car insurance, the list is endless. But I'm not that sort of a copper. I'd like us to be pals. P pals? Sort of thing I mean. A whole bunch of timbers just vanished from Lord Ashfordley's woods. If you would have any idea who took it, that'd be us being pals, see? The woodman thought he saw your truck parked up there a couple of evenings ago. Well, no, no, they must be mistaken. I've not been up there for years. He's particularly upset about the fence posts, by the way. Fence posts? A bunch of fence posts. Worth about a fiver. I, I, I never touch the fence posts. I'm not interested in catching minnows, Mr Greengrass. My job's bigger than that. But I do expect them to cooperate. Thank you for the tea. Cheerio. Just don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> don't know just what to do with myself. I'm so used to doing everything everything for two. And now that we're through. You coming in, David? I just don't know what to do. If anybody asks, be my assistant for the night. All right. Thanks, Mr. Bradley. Oh, man. Maury? Shots? Maury? <laughs> Bradley's gonna like that, isn't he? Yeah, so is Ricky. Shut up. Woo! <laughs> right then. Let's... Look. <laughs> Now, if you haven't got a ticket, you can get one inside. Come on, come on. Excuse me. What do you think you're doing? I beg your pardon? Hope you realise they're brand new fence posts you're nicking. And I'm getting the blame for them going missing, so just, just put them down and get back to where you belong. Or I'll inform the constabulary. Oh. I wouldn't do that, old fella. Not unless you want me to tell them about you. What are you talking about? Nicking that great pile of wood over there. 
Because I saw you. Yeah, well, I happen to be a friend of the owner and, and he asked me to clear it. That's it. Excuse me. I'm talking to you. It's a good job. You're going. Club. Yeah, don't. It scares me to death. So, uh, how's it going with you and Neil these days? Now he's in the village. Okay. No chance you'll get back together then. What? Well, you know, I was, I was just wondering. Well, I saw you coming out of his house, didn't I? Um. No. No. Absolutely no. No. No, no, absolutely. Well, sorry I spoke. With your hand resting in my I feel a power so divine. You're my world, you're my night. And Gina. <coughs> hey, I thought this was the bar. When did you turn it into the smoke room? It's not funny, Claude. I've got no customers thanks to you and your logs. Uh, all right, they just need some draft under them. Well, according to Sergeant Craddock, the logs are cherry wood. So it'll never burn, because all cherry wood does is smoke. Sergeant Craddock, what does he know about it? In any case, he hadn't ought to be in here boozing, he ought to be out doing a bit of coppering. Well, he was in here looking for you. Looking for me? What for? The estate's been onto him again. Yet more timbers gone walkies from the woods. So the logs weren't just rubbish. They were stolen rubbish. So I want me money back. You've got no chance. That's long gone. Claude! What about me logs? I'll replace the flaming logs with some that might. Right, quiet down, everyone. Any last requests? Take it soon. Any shoe, 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 shoe. Oh, it's in pieces! <laughs> One of you turned up. I called Constable Bradley, but there was no reply. You know, in my day, this would have been nipped in the bud ages ago.
Constable? That's what I like to see. Building bridges, getting to know your public. Night, Constable Bradley. Where's Maureen? Uh, she went home with Jennifer. Oh. Night, David. You did well tonight. Oh, thanks, Mr. Bradley. Ainsville Police. <sighs> right. Uh, right. Um, I'll be there in ten minutes. Yeah. Um. Hello. Okay, Bradley. Give me the address. She was supposed to come back with Mrs. Caswell. Have you phoned Mrs. Caswell? Yes. And she said Maureen had gone home with Jennifer, but when I phoned Jennifer's parents, she hadn't. If anything's happened to her. I'm, I'm sure it hasn't. Um, now, can I have a quick word with Mr. Dodds? He's out looking for her. I see. Right. Uh, I'll get down to the village and make some inquiries. If you could just wait here. No, I want to come with you. Please, Mrs. Dodds. Someone has to stay here in case she comes back. 
Look, I'll ask Nurse Bolton to come and sit with you. I don't want anybody sitting with me. I want Maureen found. Look, I'm, I'm sure there's a perfectly simple explanation to all of this, all right? It might be a false alarm, Sarge. I'm just going to go and pay the uh, boyfriend a visit. Get in. You can tell me on the way. So where exactly were you? The coke shed. Speak up. The coke shed, sir. Then you came out and found everybody had gone? Yeah. Apart from David. That's uh, David Stockwell, sir. He was giving me a hand with the, uh, the disco. And what time is this? Quarter past eleven. Did you lend her your bike? You didn't walk her home? Yeah. She wanted to get home quick. She's dead scared of her dad. Is that all? When we're in the coke shed, Someone keep the door in. Who was that? I don't know. It was it was dark. All right. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. You better go and see this David character. I'll ring Bellamy and Ventress and go back up to the Dodds. Someone kicked the door in. What was that all about then? Where is he? Come on, Sniff. Come on. Where, where is he? Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Where is he? John, this is Sergeant Craddock. Have you found her yet? Come on, John. Why don't you sit down for a minute? My daughter's out there somewhere. In the dark. In the cold. And you stand there drinking tea! Mr Dodds, everything that can be done is being done. Constable Bradley's down in the village carrying out further inquiries. I've got two constables due here any minute to make a thorough search of the roadside. Oh, talk, talk. Is that all you can do? So, you saw her going through the village on a bike? Aye. What'd you do then? Come home. But your mum said you didn't get home till 12.30. I didn't follow her. Follow who? Maureen. I just wanted to see if she were all right, right? Because she shook me out by herself. Because there's that man, he's been following all those girls in those woods. And by the time I got there, she'd gone. I was going to give it back in the morning, honest. Give what back, David? The bike. You've got the bike? What? Well, where is it? This is Ricky's bike, is it? I didn't steal it. It was lying in the road. Tracing her steps, sir. Well, she was seen leaving the village, weren't she? So she won't be down here. She's got to be up in the woods somewhere. That was Sergeant Craddock. He wants us to call off the search for the morning. Call it off? Well, only for a couple of hours until it's light. But we can't stop now. Well, we've uh, checked all the obvious places. Not a lot more we can do. Well, not so we can see properly. I don't believe this. He's arrested someone on suspicion. And carry it on. Arrested someone? Who? You can't make me a prisoner. You're not a prisoner, David. You're helping us with our inquiries. But I've got to go home. I should be in bed. My mum will kill me. Listen, Sonny. You're here for your own good. There are people out there who'd like to tear you limb from limb. Why? The bike that Maureen Dodds was riding was found in your shed. Was keeping it safe. Okay. Let's start again. You say you saw Maureen riding through the village at eleven thirty. Oh, and she, she shouldn't be out by herself, because there's this man right, and he's been following the girls. So I went after her. 
Go on. But I couldn't catch her up because she was riding right fast. So I just... Followed her. But I found the bike lying in the middle of the road. And what was Maureen doing? Well, she wasn't there. It just, she left it and gone home. Think very hard, David. Are you quite sure you didn't catch her up and talk to her before you took the bike? No. You definitely didn't see her before you took the bike. I saw her at the dance. <laughs> and what about in the lane where the bike was? So, you didn't catch her up and push her off the bike and go into the woods with her? No. No. No, no, you ask her, she'll tell you that I didn't. I can't, David. Because since she left the bike in the lane, she hasn't been seen. What's happened to her? Funny place to pay out the pensions, isn't it? On your way, Greengrass. Gina. What's he up to? Maureen Dodds has gone missing. Since when? Last night after the disco. What, do you think she's up here somewhere? Well, we don't know yet. But they found the bike she was riding hidden in David Stockwell's shed. What, my David? Yeah, and they've arrested him. I suppose, as usual, they made two and two make five. Height, five feet. Slim build, age 15. Long fair hair. Blue eyes wearing a silver cardigan. Pink dress carrying a red handbag. That's right. Can I have a word, Sergeant Craddock, pal? Hope you realise you've arrested the wrong bloke. It's not David who ought to be helping you with your inquiries. It's that red-headed Scottish bloke who's living in the woods. I beg your pardon? David Stockwell would no more attack Maureen Dodds and fly in the air. It's that, it's that Scottish bloke you want. If you must know, it's, it's him that's nicking the fence posts and all. Right. There's someone in the woods. Oh, give me strip. Yes, he's Scottish. We're a big dog. We're red air. You can hardly miss him. He'll probably be carrying a load of fence posts. Where are you going? Maureen! 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 Neil? Mr Dodds is absolutely all in. Maureen! He's over there. I've tried to get him to Maureen. take a break, but he just won't. Well, in that case, it's probably best if he just carries on, isn't it? Excuse me. Is that hers? Yes. Yeah? Dog handler! Yeah. Come on, mate. Go, 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 go. He's got a scent. Come on. <laughs> First time I've been in this way, we're a copper. Delta Alpha 2 1 to control. Any news? Control to Delta Alpha 2 1. No, Sarge. I'm going off the woods now. Radio Bradley, tell him to make his way to. Where is it? Uh, oh, get it in. Oh, Phil, bring well bottom. Yeah, near the badger set. Received. Out. Thank you. Now listen. Two groups. One that way, one with me. Right. Worry! <laughs> All right, Mrs. Dodds. No, no, it weren't as bad as that. Right. Message from Sergeant Craddock. There's a man living rough over at Brinkwell's. Oh, 
go back up the track. Wait for Bradley. Hey, as much as I enjoy scratching your back, I've got an appointment. Wait where I told you and show him the way. You want to show him the truth and the light as well, dear. Please, Kitty, no further. I'm coming with you. Please. Don't leave me. Tell her to go, Mr. Bradley. She shouldn't be here. Yeah, neither should you. Look, take her home and leave us to do this bit. We're not too sure who's down at this camp, but I can assure you it's probably got nothing to do with Maureen. No. Oh, what are you doing here? Unpaid police work, by the look of it. The land does no lad wants you up here. Come on. For the police. Can I come in, please? Sorry, mate. No one can send in my home without an invitation. And you have definitely not got one. Your daughter carrying a red handbag last night? Yeah, yeah, she was. Perhaps, sir, we could just take a look at that bag on your table. You've got that bag. You know where she is. Where who is? My daughter. What is she? Where is she? Hey, 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 hey. Please, please, if you know anything about where she is. So you're an ever loving daddy? No, oh, oh, do oh, thank you. Oh, well, well, well. Hey. Should be ashamed of yourself. Uh, yeah, Come yeah, because I know. She told me everything. No, Andy, please, please no. Maureen! Oh, my God, what has it done to you? Yeah, take a look, Mr Dodds. Look at what you did. It's pretty, isn't it? Maureen, love. No, Dad! Maureen! Don't ask me, Mum. You're not going to tell her? No! OK. Well, I'll do it for you, then. I found her in the woods last night. No, please! Found her wandering about, crying, in shock. What? What's he saying? So I had to take her in, because she didn't go home. What's he saying? I saw her in the call house. She was... She was with a lad. She had to be taught a lesson. You did this to her. Beat up your own daughter. Reported her missing and didn't tell us, not even your wife. It weren't like that. Your wife's been going through agonies. Me and my men have been up half the night. A lad's been arrested and you stood by and said nothing. I didn't know what to do. She ran off. I couldn't find her. I thought... I thought she'd gone. Run away. Please, Kitty. Oh, me! All I did was punish her like any father would. No! Look at her! Look at her! Hey, you to be locked up! That's enough! Call his own daughter about! That'll do, thank you. John Dodds, I'm arresting you and charging you with assault occasioning actual bodily harm. Not before time, neither. Said he'd like to be dropped here. We're a bit scared of ma'am, as far as I can make out. Oh, nice work, by the way, Mr. Greengrass. Thanks to you, we found the girl and the bloke nicking the timber all in one fell swoop. I get the feeling you and I are going to get along just fine. What a shame the feeling isn't mutual. For somebody who's a goody, good, good, David, you don't half get into some trouble. Well, that's what Sergeant Craddock said. He said I were a good lad. You know, I told him I'll help you out and that. What have you been telling him? Well, I told him all about our log business. You know, he said I were a right good lad. You what? Only about me soaring up for you, Mr Greengrass. Come on, David, what have you been telling him? Well, you know, about how, how you're a friend of Lord Ashford and he gives you hot wood for nothing and pheasants and... It's a good job for you, I've got a bad leg. Why? Because it's got me boot on the end of it. Get in! Come on, over it. Come on, up, hey, come on, up! Good job you can't talk at all. Bet you that new sergeant's feeling pretty pleased with himself. Don't talk to me about that man. He's really upset, poor Alf. Well, at least he found Maureen. Excuse me, I was the one that found her. Quite the local hero. 
If it hadn't been for me, Sergeant will keep a welcome and still be looking. Hey, Gina, you heard about him and Maggie on the dance floor? Quite a Mr. Twinkle Tolls, by all accounts. Him and Maggie? Yeah, talk about come dancing. Well, I thought it was Maggie and Mike these days. Maggie and Mike? Yeah. Don't so daft. You know what I think? I think he was jealous of him. Of Ricky. Oh, come on, Maggie. Some fathers, I mean, it happens. But we don't really know anything, so let's not speculate. Let's just say that John Dodds is an overprotective father. Oh, come on, it was, it was more than that. And I'll be keeping my eye on it. But Maureen and the family, they have to live in this village. It's not fair to gossip. Same again. Hello? Hello. Would you care to join us? No, thanks. I can't bear this anymore. Sorry? Being sent to outer Siberia. Is this what you wanted? No, it isn't. And it's very hurtful. I still care about you a lot, Neil. Why do you think we ended up together the other night? I'm not completely stupid. Um, yeah. Same again for me and Mike, please, Gina, and uh, whatever Neil's having. Right. I think... I still love you. What? You heard. Maggie. Is he, is he joining us or what? Did you say? 